All right, let's uh, let's do a quick three-point lighting tutorial. Um, we're going to use 3D Studio Max for this particular tutorial. However, um, what were the tools we're using um, for this tutorial uh, are available in every 3D software package there is, whether it's Maya, Lightwave, um, XSI. It, you know, we're not using anything fancy. We're using standard uh, light sets, light tools. Um, so this this tutorial should be easily translated into into your 3D software package uh, of choice. Um, you know, I think one of the one of the one of the shortcomings of uh, most beginner beginner animators and digital filmmakers, as far as a lighting standpoint, um, is really not knowing where to begin. Um, as you can see, there are a host of of lighting um, options um, within the within the software, and you know they make it very easy to start going in, um, dropping in all these different kinds of lights. They make it very easy to adjust all the parameters very quickly. Um, and what ends up happening is one of two things: one, it's intimidating, and so the student just uses one type of light or one, you know, sort of over overwhelming light source or, you know, goes crazy and adds a bunch in there with sort of really no direction. And either way, the, the lighting uh, of your shots becomes pretty muddled uh, very quickly. And um, what we want to do here with this three-point lighting tutorial is, is, is give yourself, give you a foundation, uh, a place to start, really. Um, and you know, once you go in, you know, while while most three D productions um, certainly do not use three point lighting uh, per se in every shot, you know, this is a great foundation from which you start with and then build on and then keep adding lights and adjusting and so on and so forth. So, let's pull up uh, a file that's included on the CD called uh, Soccer Ball Three Point Start, um, and you'll notice you'll 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 recognize this uh, this scenario because you've seen this shot uh, quite a bit throughout the images and, and the text, especially for the lighting and material sections. Um, you know, right now, because there are no lights in the scene, you know, what you're seeing is the software's um, default lighting. And uh, certainly uh, it tries to mimic sort of a, a light source. So you can probably see it coming in through here, causing a, a bit of a hot spot on the soccer ball. And, you know, the light starts to shift through over the soccer ball, and it's certainly darker on the bottom. However, no shadows, um, and the table, the wooden table, seems to be pretty uh, pretty uh, bland and flat at the moment. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump right in and start um, building up a three-point lighting. Um, scenario and you'll be able to see at the end um, without changing any of the model any of the core geometry textures uh, camera um, the difference we'll be able to make and and really bring the, th the 3d aspect um, of this scene out um, make the ball look like it's three-dimensional make it look like it's sitting on that table and make the table uh, look like it has dimensionality and depth um, so the first thing we want to do is um, let's drop a a main light into into the scene so um, also called a key light um, this will be the light source I'll be prov providing um, uh, the main uh, the most light um, and be the major direction of your scene um, I'm fairly convinced at least um, on the on the get-go right out of the gate that you can do most of your lighting with spotlights um, and I you know I, I teach my students that um, you know start there and then start to build your your repertoire around that learn how to light with spotlights learn all the the features um, and 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 tools within a spotlight parameters and then work your way up from that so that's exactly what we're going to use we're going to use a target spot um, and if I quickly show you uh, where the camera is it's sort of coming uh, sort of slightly to the right uh, as you can see here so um, we're going to use a three-point uh, lighting scenario so what we're going to do is pick a target spot and we're going to go uh, slightly we'll start in the top view um, slightly to the right of the camera uh, and drag it inwards and have the target land uh, right on top of the ball there uh, and as you notice from 
the left view, um, the spotlight lands itself on the on the on the axis, so it's really not hitting anything. As you can see, this overrides by adding that spotlight in. It overrides the default lighting in the scene, so that's great. And you can start to see in the in the camera view that the only the bottom of the table is being lit at this point. So let's uh, let's go ahead and adjust that. So let's lift up um, the left view here um, and grab grab um, both actually the target and the the camera, the, I mean the main light here, the cone of the light, and let's get at least even with the ball. Um, you'll be able to see uh, now that the light's shining on there, but however, you know, we, we don't want it to be exactly um, even with the ball, so what we're going to do is grab the cone and leave the target uh, in the center of the ball. We're going to move that um, that cone to approximately a 45 degree angle uh, from where the ball sits uh, on that table. So, um, you know, you end up looking something like that. It's slightly higher, as you can see, than the camera uh, from a from a profile view, the left view here. Uh, from a top view, it's to the right um, to the right side of the camera as well. Um, and what that gives you right off the big, uh, right off the bat is, you know, providing you the main source of light and direction to your scene. Um, so that's really the, the, the main or the key light here. So, uh, now it's time to dive into the parameters. So, um, you know, the, one of the first things I notice, uh, right off the top, um, that is not casting, uh, any shadow. So let's go ahead and turn that on right there. Uh, and we can leave shadow maps on. Um, so let's go ahead and, and render that shot and okay great so um, we now have a shadow casting onto the table it helps place that object into the scene it's 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 allowing the the light the uh, soccer ball on the table to interact a bit uh, now the ball feels very much sitting uh, on top of the table however um, you know the shadow angle is not ideal so I'm gonna actually kick the light around a little bit more um, it's a little bit more of an angle from a top view, um, and actually raise the the angle of the light a bit, so uh, shorten the shadow up a tad, um, and that way the 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 main light source is actually um, more on the angle of this particular part of that 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 sort of. Uh, portion of the soccer ball here this this white spot so that seems to be about right there um intensity wise um right now it's at uh the lights intensity is at default of, of a one uh, if you open up that it's a multiplier of one and it's at uh the default white um the main light you know i think one of the one of the other aspects that students uh tend to overlook is the color of the light um or not only overlook or go way crazy with it. So um, one of the things we'll be talking about once we start adding uh, the next few lights um, is the color shift. But right for right now, um, let's not let's not leave any uh, light colors exactly pure white. So we want this to be on the warmer side. So what I'm going to do is make this just a, a tad on the yellow. Uh, just to bring some color into the scene. Uh, so again, I'll render that. Uh, and you can start to see that it slightly yellows up some of the white uh, parameters there of the soccer ball. So that's pretty good. We'll leave it at, um, we'll leave it at a, a multiplier of one. Um, so the next thing we want to do is adjust the shadow um, uh, parameters a bit. So uh, again, it's a shadow map, um, and that's fine. Uh, again, the color uh, default completely black. I, you know, we want to stay away from uh, the lights being completely white and the and the, the shadows being completely black. Um, so for this particular case, I'm going to make it just slightly blue. I'm I'm just using slight amounts. I mean, almost unnoticeable. Um, so um, let's give that a render, and you can just notice that it just brighten it up just a just a tad. Um, 